Hey everyone, welcome to episode 372 of the All Dolphins podcast on this Tuesday, October 1st, start of a brand new month. Hopefully one that will bring better news for the Miami Dolphins because September was rather ugly as Dave Hyde is here to join me and discuss on this day after, how would, how would we describe this performance against the Tennessee Titans, Dave Hyde? Oh boy, it took me back to 2007 when the Dolphins were one and 15, and I was yep. uh, didn't know what I was if I would ever see a win that season. And I took or 2019 when they purposely tanked. I mean, when they were just awful. I mean, there are other years, but um, this is a surprising one, and that I didn't I didn't think they. You know, you saw signs that, like with every season, okay, is this going to work out or not? But I didn't see a full-out collapse like this. No, it has been rather precipitous. Um, and we're going to get into it after we dissect the news of the day. And there was plenty of it in the day after Mike McDaniel press conference, including uh, the announcement that Tyler Huntley was going to get a second start at quarterback against the New England Patriots on Sunday and a whole slew of injury updates. Um let us proceed with the injury updates real quick, and then we'll get back to Tyler Snoop Huntley. Uh, again, this now we've passed four weeks, so this was the week where the Dolphins could have as many as seven players back from either PUP with the, the three-week window opening or back from IR as, as designated per, for return. And McDaniel indicated there would be two players who would be back to practice this week starting Wednesday, and those two would be wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. <sighs> and the other one being second-year cornerback Cam Smith, which means the other five not quite ready. That includes Bradley Chubb, Isaiah Wynn, uh, Cameron Good, Pat McMorris, River Craycraft. Um, the other guys, per, Mc, uh, per Mike McDaniel, are progressing well, but the only two back this week, Cam Smith, and Odell Beckham Jr. Reminder, this is only the opening of the three window. Does not mean that Odell Beckham is going to play against New England. It means he'll be back at practice. And now the, the clock starts on the three-week window. First off, Tyler Huntley getting a second start. Part of the reason Mike McDaniel said, Mike McDaniel said is that Skylar Thompson's rib injury is laborsome is the word he used. Uh, thoughts on that one? Well, I, I mean, you're looking at best option available, right? I mean, I, I assume that it's, it's that. And and look, last night wasn't Tyler Huntley's fault. He's in the camp two weeks. He's he's a uh, practice quarterback off Baltimore. Um, he made some plays. He made some. I'm sure he wants some plays back. But there there are bigger bigger issues than Tyler Huntley, starting with. Uh, the decisions to on the quarterbacks, you know, how did they get in this position? You know, but, but I have no problem with Tyler Huntley. No. And here's the thing. Tyler Huntley last night was basically who Tyler Huntley is. He made some plays with his legs, led the Dolphins in rushing with 40 yards and he was inconsistent with the passing, missed some throws that were there. There was the one obviously to Tyreek Hill on the third and 17 bomb where after he got behind LeJarre Sneed, the ball is anywhere near on the money that's a touchdown and it's a long touchdown too at the time it was 16 to 6 that may have like slammed the door on the, any chance of a Dolphins comeback but that's who Tyler Huntley is and very very good question asked of Mike McDaniel today which was basically is it possible that maybe the offense is tailored too much to Tua to where more adjustments need to be made when Tua is not in there and Mike McDaniel kind of semi-danced around the question basically suggesting well yeah but players have to step up and, and help out whoever's at quarterback. And that's not happening. On the contrary, Tyreek Hill had the nasty drop that became a fumble because it was a lateral. And then Jalen Waddle also dropped the pass. And those guys are just not stepping up, even though defenses are taking them away, A, but B, they're also just not playing great. Yeah, I mean, Tyreek Hill, not only the drop pass, yeah, he, he was open deep, and, and that'd be what we'd be talking about. Um, on the, on the other hand, it's hard for a guy to come in and start throwing to Tyreek Hill immediately. Cause no one's used to that speed. I'm sure and you, you saw what Huntley did. He just threw it as far as he could on, on, by, by the, the final deep pass. And he, he did the rare thing. He out threw, um, Tyreek Hill by a step and, and 
But, um, you know, Tyreek Hill, you know, I, part of it's the quarterback and part of it's the new newness of it all. And I'm sure part of it's Tyreek when, when he's called for shifting um, or they have three illegal shifts on their touchdown to drive, you know, at the end uh, in, in borderline yeah, garbage yeah. time. But but still, they're trying to get something going. And, and you know, that just – you know, they need all these guys who are high talents, got big money, and and the offense is really built around to start. And you saw what Mike McDaniel wanted to do the first series. Uh, first play over the middle to Waddle. Second play in the round to, mm-hmm. to Tyreek Hill. Third play, run to a chain. And fourth play, the, the lateral to Tyreek that, you know – there's a small window for this offense right now. And, 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 uh, you know, he not only dropped the pass and he just, the ball just rolling on the ground and he didn't even go after it. Like, like he's like youth league football where you're not aware that, Oh, that maybe that's a lateral. Okay. And, and that shouldn't happen at this level. No, I agree. And, and another issue with the, with the offense without Tua. And, and I tried to make that point last night, I, or I made the point, I should say, is everything is based on timing, and it's also based on how many reps in practice that those guys have together where it becomes second nature, where Tua knows where Tyreek's going to be, the speed with which he runs his routes, the, the way he makes his cuts. Again, it's repetition, 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 and they've got it down to science, and now Tua's not there, and the, the next quarterback, they don't have the, that kind of – uh, what's what I'm looking at? Those, those reps with, with Tyreek Hill, especially Tyler Huntley, wasn't even on the roster two weeks ago. So now you know, you're asking, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, and I heard like all throughout the because I went came home last night and and uh, you know, I'm a little jacked up from covering the game and everything. And and I watched the ESPN broadcast. And how many times did they say, Well, this is this is a this is why you need Tua in there? Look, this offense has not done well going back to the end of last season, okay? they Five of those starts were two. Of, five games were two of us. Mm-hmm. Two games were the, the backup. There's a steep drop off to the backups, okay? I, I get that. But this offense struggled. It hasn't scored over 20 points in those seven games, okay? So it's not like – and it's had one good quarter, really, the, the fourth quarter against Jacksonville. So it's not like – you know, Tua was lighting it up either with what was going on here. And so that presents more problems of what is going on here. Have defenses taken away the passing lanes, which is part of it? Um, or does Mike McDaniel need to find another level for this? Or they aren't running the ball well this year either. And and you saw Mike McDaniel's play calling last night on fourth and shorts. Like he does not trust this offensive line when they're running end arounds and sweeps on fourth and inches or fourth and one. And it's mind boggling over what's going on. So we're back to there. Are, there are some big problems here beyond the quarterback. Yeah, and it seems like the Dolphins can't win any, or very few, I should say, because there there were there were a couple of nice runs up the middle, but they rarely win battles up front with one on one blocking that allows them to go up the middle. So they basically are are left to try to go outside, and I think defenses are hip to that, and it's like no, oh no, you don't. And you saw like on that fourth and one jet sweep with Tyree Kill, well, the linebacker Kenneth Murray got a head start heading straight to the sideline and he got there so fast that Patrick Paul, he was able to get around Patrick Paul, whose job was to get to the second level and, and cut him off. And that allowed that force Tyree to go even wider. And then Quandre Diggs comes up from the safety spot and makes a tackle. And we're seeing that way too often. And the other part is they just don't throw down the field. They were two nice passes, like deep square ends, one to Tyree, one to Jalen Waddle, but everything else is that damn quick throw at the line of scrimmage, the bubble screen, it's like, my, how many of those are they going to throw? I mean, Jesus. Yeah, it, it is like it's built on two. They, they, they don't want them to get hit, so they're getting rid of the ball. And it's also built, again, I they trust the two tackles when Teron Armstead's in there, and and but they don't trust the line as a whole. And and I, I get we were chuckled at 
by the media was chuckled at by Chris Greer for bringing this up, but you know, it's an issue. It's a legitimate issue. And, um, you know, it's, it's not like ten Tennessee was without Jeffrey Simmons too. We talk about the dolphins injuries. I, I get it. And, and legitimate injuries to talk about, but the other side has injuries too. If Jeffrey Simmons in there, he's a game wrecker. He's a game plan wrecker. And, and, and that Seattle was without two defensive tackles. They're two starting defensive tackles. At some point, they're going to run up against a defense that is uh, healthy in the middle, and then who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, and, and the thing that's annoying to me is I look around the NFL and I see teams winning with backups, starting with Malik Willis, who and, and I get it's a big drop from Tua to Skylar Thompson or, or Tim Boyle or Tyler Huntley, and that's on the Dolphins. It's a major drop from Jordan Love to Malik Willis, and they completely revamped what they do offensively to make it work, and they went 2-0 and with Malik Willis. And then you want to talk about the ability to go drastically change your style within a game. Look at what the Colts did against the Steelers on Sunday. They have Anthony Richardson in the game, and then, oh, but what did they do? They were smart. They got themselves a really, really good veteran backup, and Joe Flacco comes into the game, and you, you, they're not calling the same place for Joe Flacco that they are for Anthony Richardson. Uh, no RPO in there for Joe Flacco, and boom, they won. He throws two touchdown passes. Yeah, and you look at Tennessee. I mean, they won with Rudolph coming in there, and and as he said after the game, I really didn't do a lot. I oh. he handed the ball off, and they didn't have a some explosive running game. They just kept at it all night, and they had time of double the time of possession the first half. That's their game plan, I'm sure. Wear down the clock and and keep running the ball up the middle and. And we'll average 3.6 yards a carry, but that will be good enough because um, the, Dolph the Dolphins aren't going to score on us. And so um, teams are winning with backups. Um, the Dolphins just look awful with, with their quarterback room and the decisions they made in February and March are coming to haunt them right now. Bad. I apologize for the background noise here. I got my two cats who normally love each other right now. Oh, they're in fighting mode. Fighting, I see it. Nobody's happy in South Florida right now. Exactly. They're like they're debating the debating the offense and then whether it would, would be humming with two in there. Uh back to like the, the Titans. I said before the game to me, one of the keys to victory for the Dolphins was Will Levis being Will Levis and turning the ball over. And lo and behold, right away he basically gifts Emmanuel Agua. Here you go. Emmanuel, you're playing well, you're trying hard. I'll, let me throw you the ball right at you because I'm not recognizing the zone blitz over here. But well, then he left the game. Well, and... was what six five? Yeah. Hey, how did how did he even see his receiver? That's why I, I, when I rewatched the play, I was like, how could he even find his receiver looking beyond Ogba because Ogba was standing right there. And so, but yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I figured Will Levis would be good for a couple of bonehead plays like he usually does. The, the Dolphins' offense. They got enough talent that they'll make do, and and they'll come through. And uh, but, then it became, but here's the thing: is that once Will Levis left the game, I'm sure Brian Callahan told Mason Rudolph, "Whatever you do, we're not going to ask you to do anything. Just don't turn the ball over." Yeah. And that's what they did because they figured the Dolphins are not going to hurt us because Tennessee does have a very good defense, even without Jeffrey Simmons. And I'm going to say it again: I said last night that guy in the middle of the defensive line is a stud with a capital S, Kevin yeah. Sweat. Damn, that guy can play. Yeah. Um, and that was that was basically it. And the Dolphins basically couldn't get out of their own way offensively. It, it was, and as I look ahead, because of the way the offensive line is operating, to me, their best shot again, if they're going to go with Tyler Huntley, do what he does best, call some RPOs. I mean, and they were like, there were a couple of quarterback draws yesterday. Go back to that. That's what he does best. I, I, I would think they just got to get him. I mean, he has to be a little comfortable with what he's doing, though, and and the people around him, and and you know, the again, the mystifying part to me is a tight end would be like an insurance, a comfort blanket, I would think, for a quarterback, and and you you, you don't see any of that. Um, you don't have a power back at all. A chance back there running, and and. So you you couldn't do what Tennessee did, which was say we're going to have our line beat your line just enough, barely enough, 
that will we'll keep the ball, we'll, you know, will move the sticks, move the clock, keep the ball, and wear you down over the course of a game. Um, you know, that, that, that game, uh, I'm sure ESPN loved the ratings from that because that was, or I'm, I'm sure they loved having his second game starting an hour later so people could dump off to that game nationally. Yeah, I, I personally, I remember when the schedule came out and I'm like, why, why Tennessee and Miami again on Monday Night Football? I get that last year became a, a good game, not for the Dolphins, but in terms of if you were if you were neutral, it was an exciting finish. You know, the 14-point, the 15-point comeback, 14-point comeback, whatever, in the last three minutes. But Tennessee was, expo- was expected to be a bad team with a new coach, and I didn't get it, and that's what we got. Uh, and then you mentioned the tight end position. Well, uh, Tyler Huntley completed two passes to Tanner Connor on the last two plays of the game, yeah. which meant nothing. Outside of that, the final numbers for the tight ends in the passing game, one target, zero receptions. Yeah, combined I, I, that's why i'm just stunning to me be, again not that tight end has been a big part of the offense I, at all this year and but i keep expecting there's some easy passes there there's some easy to passes to be made that are but i guess not I, I don't think anything's easy for this offense right now and for them to go from where they were last year for the first two and a half months Mm -hmm. say to now is, is stunning. They're again, they they last in the league in points 11. Now they play the team with the second fewest points per game in new England at 13. You talk about an exciting game that's coming and and anybody who scores a touchdown in this one must feel like it's gold. By the way, the, the three point scoring total for the dolphins during this current stretch is 25 points. It's their lowest. I'm not counting 2019 because the Dolphins basically were trying to lose. Uh, it's the lowest since the first three games of the 2017 season when they okay. had Jay Cutler at quarterback. And they also had 25 points in the first three games. They won at the Chargers 19 to 6. Then they lost, I think it was 20, sorry, 19 to 17. And they lost like 20 to 6 against the Jets. And they got shut out in London by the Saints 20 to nothing. Um, and th- this is where this is where we're going right now. And quite frankly, the way the offensive line is operating, although I should point out, Teron Armstead is a possibility could be back. Um, Mike McDaniel said Tuesday he's hoping that both he and Kendall Fuller will get cleared this week. That would make a difference. Even with that, the offensive line is not playing well, is not impressive, and that the interior of the offensive line is a complete mess. And I have a hard time seeing the Dolphins like doing a whole lot. I'm sure that's not going to Problem may not be as bad as it was last night, but where where's the optimism that all of a sudden it's going to get fixed? Yeah, and the only hope is Huntley gets comfortable enough with his receivers and the offense that they create. They hit a couple of those, one or two of those big plays that that you know you know Legarius Sneed was playing uh, Tyree Kill man to man some last night, um, which was kind of shocking in itself. Um, but there's the hope that they they hit two one or two deep plays uh, Sunday where that were available Monday you know against Tennessee and 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 maybe they get comfortable enough to do it. Yeah, it's when the opportunity presents itself to hit a big play. This is where Huntley's got to show some accuracy, and again, that's not necessarily his forte, which is why yeah. it's right. and on the other side of the ball. I made this comparison to me. Dolphins right now are like the 2023 Jets, where they didn't plan properly for for an injury to their quarterback. Their defense actually is pretty good, but it's being taxed all over the place because it's constantly back on the field. Yeah. And there's one breakdown that happens again because you push, you push, you push, and eventually it opens up. And boom, the Dolphins gave up again 250 yards of offense. They're six in the NFL. In total defense, that's yards per game allowed. Their first and third down conversions allowed. Yeah. You know, I, I wrote a column today where I talk with Brian Flores, won a talent team. It was a very tough team, though. Very tough minded. Yep. Um, very tough. They toughed out wins. This is a glitzy team that really needs some grit. And, and I go back to training camp and I raise these issues and I wrote about it in my column today. I raised these issues in August. Um, and I didn't have a conclusion in August that they're not practicing hard. You, 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 you saw things. You saw 
the Atlanta Falcons running wind sprints after after practice and the Dolphins walk off the field. Um, you saw them practicing in shorts and and the Washington Redskins are in full uniform. Um, things and, and, and they add up where Clayus Campbell, I asked him about training camp. He's been around the league and he said, well, the word was when I called around that this was an easy, easy camp. Mm-hmm. Um, you said now we did more repetitions than other places, but you know, when, as anybody in any business did, what, tell me about this place. It's easy. He said, so were they develop? are they, is this a reflection of being too soft, you know, and you get into Mike McDaniel calling his players, teammates and Tua saying, this isn't Mike's team, it's our team. And you had a lot of, uh, untraditional football thought going, which, I'm not and, and on the balance, untraditional thought isn't necessarily bad. The question is it's folding, it's not working out for this team. They're, they they need to be tougher. And the question is, you know, you gotta go back to Jordan Poyer's quote in training camp where he said the word on this team was they fold in the big moments. We haven't even got to the big moments really in games because they're losing. They they've lost the last three games by uh, what the low the closest was last night, 19 points. Um, so, um, I, I, you know, this team needs to get a lot tougher real quick. Except with who would be my question is this, yeah. not, this that's not how they're built. And, and my whole thing, I, what I've said all along is, has been, it's been their margin for error. I mean, they have a track team when, and, they, and when everything is right, it's great and all that, except their margin for error the execution has to be like on point, very precise and all that. And anything that throws off the timing is going to mess everything up. Whereas teams that overpower you, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, even Buffalo, the KC at the line of scrimmage, those types of teams can be off. Patrick Mahomes for has been off the, like for two years now, except that they, they tough out and they grind out wins. And the Dolphins are just flat out not built like that. So it's either – Again, like you said, get tougher or regain that precision with which they operated for most of 2023. And if it comes to, to part A, I just don't know on this roster who are your your guys who can bring in that that toughness. Um, Poyer is one of those guys, but he's not exactly making a ton of plays. Um, Calais Campbell, but he's a part time player, even though he's the dude's been playing great. Um, but there's just not a whole lot of guys like that on this roster. Yeah, and that's the question. As the season goes on, the guys in their 30s, where are they? You know, you got to watch this and, and overplaying them earlier, and how they're going to be, and and w- what you thought would be the big games in December and January. Um, you know, they need them now, and and you know, Jordan Poyer's it's it's he's hurt. It's, it's um, what, I'm trying to remember Mike Mc. It sounded like he's not. I, I wasn't sure whether he'd be a. They weren't sure whether he'd be in or out this week. Correct. Right. And and um, so that's something to watch. Um, but but to me, the surprise of this season to me is the defense is help, holding up pretty nicely. It's fine. And and, and the offense is just a, a disaster. And and. If you had told me one side would be a disaster and the other side would be good, I would have gone the exact opposite. That I thought I saw some questions across the defense. Offense is bringing bringing back pretty much everybody. And again, I get the the problems are exasperated by because of the quarterback situation, but they were there from the start of the season when, when two was running the offense too. And so, um, you know, Mike McDaniel is going to have to. I, I hear what you're saying. It's a precision offense, and when you're not precise, it really looks bad, and that's where we're at right now. Yeah, a couple of quick uh, note-keeping, notebook, yeah, record-keeping items. Uh, you mentioned Jordan Poirier. Yeah, he's, he's, it's a shin injury. He left the game early. Uh, McDaniel says he's going to try to tough it out and, and play, and if anybody can do it, it's him. Poirier has played with a lot of injuries throughout his career, so, uh, again, if he can't play, it's because he can't. Uh, there's no really update on Jalen Phillips. They still don't know the, the extent of the, his knee injury. Uh, Dole, Dole McDaniel said he's basically not playing Sunday against New England, and we're going to keep our fingers crossed. It's nothing serious. Yeah, that's a, that's a brutal one because of what he came back for. And he's, to me, he's the epitome of what 
the Dolphins want to be. You know what? You know the the mindset, the the young in their prime talent, and and uh, for him to you know keep getting hurt like this is uh, you know it's it's tough to watch. No, it's rough, man. Jeez. Um, and I go back to the offensive line, and my point all along was the Dolphins don't ask their offensive line to do a whole lot based on right. the fact that their running game is predicated on misdirection and getting defenders to run themselves out of the play. Well, that's not happening this year. And so now it becomes mano a mano and Dolphins are just flat out not good enough. And this is where they took massive personnel downgrades when they let Robert Hunt and Connor Williams both leave. No offense to Liam Eikenberg playing at right guard or Aaron Brewer, the new starting center. Uh, those guys are not performing anywhere near the level of Hunt and Williams last year. Yeah, I, I, look, they had to let Hunt, Hunt go, getting $20 million. I mean, I, I get that. Um, but remember, and, and but the, the talk like Tua is saying, you know, I don't care what's playing in front of me because I'm just going to throw the ball so quickly. I mean, it, it, okay, when you're in there and against bad defense, is that fine? But there can be time. You need some help, some physical push. Yeah something up front as you said winning mano a mano and and that's not something you can trust they have because they're they're what's what do they four of 30 on third and fourth downs okay and and obviously not all those are short yardage but last night fourth and one um they didn't even, mike mcdaniel didn't even trust running into the line that um fourth and one in uh seattle at the seattle 39 all last year he would have gone for. He's kicking a field goal. These are telling signs what he thinks of the offensive line. Correct, absolutely. And I remember when Tua, when Tua made that comment, it was like it was attention grabbing and all that. And then it's cool in a way, but then, I mean, what's he what's he saying about his guys up front? You know? Yeah, um, yeah. That, so. and, and again, you you can't. Seasons twist and turn, and all of a sudden the backup quarterback's in. Well, he doesn't have the same skill set, or and nor should he, as Tua. Yeah. And and all of a sudden you need that offensive line to be a little better and and help help. You need everybody to little be be a little better, okay? And so for them just to dispatch, oh, who cares about the middle of the offensive line? And I'm not just Tua, but I'm talking the guys who are making the decisions, Chris right. Career and McDaniel. Um, you know, you know they're getting they're 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 getting all their decisions are coming back to haunt them in in some places. Yep, and then instead of everybody picking up their game to compensate for the loss of, the loss of Tua, it's gone the other way. Yeah, and as a result, we have what we have: the Dolphins sitting at one and three, and right now I believe it's Tankathon has him with the second overall pick in the twenty twenty five draft as of now. Um, behind only the Jacksonville Jaguars who are 0 4 So, uh, again, chance to get back on track against another really bad team, the New England Patriots, on Sunday. But at this point, we shouldn't be taking anything for granted. That's going to wrap it up. Uh, please like, subscribe, share all that good stuff. want to, again, thanks Dave Hyde from the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Catch his work at sentinel.com. I did read your column. I thought, in fact, I messaged you or sent you a text saying yeah, thank you. Was a great column. So. Thanks for Let's hope day. someday we have something better to talk, some good news. You know, I, I feel too much this past quarter century has been, and here we go. I feel we're, the elevator's going down again, and uh, it's not a fun ride. It's been a rough start, let's put it this way. And hopefully your your evening, the rest of your Tuesday, is not rough, but very, very enjoyable. We'll be back here on Wednesday. Thanks, everyone. All righty.